Hey there, friend. Church D coming at you once again. Thank you for tuning in to What Does It Take to Win? On this episode, we'll be discussing the topic of accountability. Yes, accountability. Accountability is also known as responsibility. Now, the definition, the official definition that I found on Google, of course, <laughs> of accountability is the fact or condition of being accountable, or simply put, responsibility. It seems as though this generation, the timing in which we're, the time in which we're living in, we all seem to have an issue with accountability. Um, you know, nowadays when you go on social media, and that seems to be like you know the thing, if you will, like everybody's on social media. You watch all of these uh, videos or certain memes that are posted, and it's like the common theme is who's going to check me, or I don't have to be held accountable to anyone. You know, it's almost like lawlessness in a sense. Um, but I'm here to tell you that we should all be held accountable to somebody at some level uh, because accountability shows a level of maturity. It shows a level of responsibility and it shows actually a level of leadership. If you're unable to be held accountable for your actions, then how can you be successful? How can you win? If you're going to be a leader and you're going to try to carry your team to like the championship like let's say in basketball or whatever you want to carry your team to the championship and you can't be held accountable for the mistakes that you've made or the errors that came about when you were planning certain plays or trying to execute them then you're not a leader simply put uh that's a little bit of a rant so I'm, i apologize for that <laughs> but let's dive right in um once again i always come up with some points that I believe will help us to understand, you know, the topic in which I'm talking about. So let's dive right in. Okay, so first, with accountability, we need to be held accountable for our actions. We can't just go out and do what we feel like doing whenever we feel like doing it. As a matter of fact, if all of us did something like that, I'm pretty sure that the crime rate would be a lot higher than it is today. And to an extent, you have the police enforcing this, you know, where it's like you have to be held accountable for your actions. The police enforce it. You couldn't go out and just jump into a brand new car and say, oh, I like this car. It's mine now. No, you got to pay for it. That's stealing, you know. Um, so, yeah, back to our actions and us having to be accountable for it. We can't partake in certain activities that will be harmful to our image. Um, for example, if you're an artist and I like to use the music thing a lot because that's like my field. That's my go to. <laughs> uh, but if you're an artist, let's say you're a Christian artist, right? And you're putting out gospel music. You shouldn't be upholding an image that's the opposite of what you're putting out. And the same goes for if you were not a Christian artist, you have record labels and different management companies. They want their artists to portray a certain image and you have to be held accountable for the image that you're portraying. Okay. Let's discuss something that doesn't have to do with music. Let's talk about finances. And that seems to be the thing that is like driving millennials crazy nowadays because we have all this student le student loan debt and it's like difficult to get a job because now everybody's like super qualified. Or when you do get the job, you don't get paid the amount that you need because then you're like putting all your money right back into the student loan debt that you accumulated. <laughs> but let's talk about financials. You have to be held accountable with your financial situation. Um, if you know you have like hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans and, you know, you need to be tight with your money, it would not be wise for you to go out and spend it on something like fast food on the regular or to just make an irresponsible purchase for a want as opposed to a need. So let's say, you know, you're living in an apartment and you have a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt. It wouldn't be wise for you to take that money that you need to use to pay for your rent and your student loan debt and go out and buy like a brand new huge flat screen TV. It wouldn't be wise. Just stick to what you got or just use the Internet. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to things like this, yeah, you have to be held accountable with it. In fact, this ties into the next point that I'll be talking about, and it deals with relationships. You know, whether it's like your business relationship or like a romantic type of relationship, Accountability is like the main thing that can make or break a relationship. You know, as I mentioned, like if you're not responsible or if you're not able to be held accountable, like with your finances, um, 
that can be harmful to a romantic relationship. So let's say you all are planning on getting married and you're supposed to be saving up tons of money to pay for the wedding, to pay for the house and to pay for the honeymoon and just to, you know, be comfortable after the whole wedding has faded away and now you guys are in marriage. It wouldn't be wise for you to go out there and blow some money on like a brand new truck or something. Like, let's say you're a guy, right? I know women drive trucks too, but this is something guys do. <laughs> or, yeah. So let's say you've saved up, I don't know, $20,000, right? And this money's supposed to be going towards your wedding and towards your marriage life afterwards. It wouldn't be wise for you to go out and blow it on a $16,000 pickup truck, you know? And then just be like, oh, well, it's my money. So I did with it whatever I wanted to. No, where's your accountability? You have to be held accountable for your action. Um, even business owners, let's talk about the business side of things. So a lot of people who open up companies or small businesses, they don't just go into it and say, okay, it's my money. I'm going to make it however I want and I'm going to spend it however I want. They actually have business advisors or financial advisors who tell them, okay, this is where you want to put your money. This is how you don't want to spend your money. This is how you do want to spend your money. This account is going to be beneficial to you in the future or in the long run and so on. They have that level of accountability with their financial advisors. Then how much more we with our peers or even with ourselves, you know, I'm not going to go out there and just be rude and disrespectful to any and everybody it doesn't make sense. Like, where's my level of accountability? I know I wasn't raised like that. And I know that I wouldn't want to be treated like that. That's another rant that I kind of went off topic with, but I guess you get the point. <laughs> Let me jump back on topic. Uh, the last point I'm going to talk about are your decisions and choices. And with that, I mean, I'm going to kind of like, you know, give you a subtopic of the blame game and excuses. Um, you should be able to own up to your own decisions and choices that you've made. If you've made a mistake, learn from it. it. It becomes very tiring and draining if you're trying to communicate with an individual who will not own up to their mistakes and they don't want to be held accountable for it. So let's say I made a mistake. Let's say, oh, no, Church D went out and he made a bad purchase and now he's in debt. And he doesn't have any money. And so he's running around trying to ask people, hey, can I borrow $100 from like 10 people? Right. OK. I would advise those people not to give me that money so I can learn from that mistake. Why? Because I'm a grown up and I should be able to know right from wrong. And I'd have to learn from that and say, OK, you know what? I made an unwise purchase that I should not have done. Now I have to live with it and try to you know, make the money back. So I'll just have to right my wrongs and not blame anybody for the poor decisions and choices that I made. Uh, sometimes we come across some people who like to, you know, blame other people for their mistakes. They don't want to be held accountable. I would advise you to stay far away from those people. Well, maybe not stay far away from them, but just kind of love them from a distance. Just Watch them. Oh, yeah, cool. But don't don't get too close to them because we don't want that behavior to rub off on us. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, we have to be held accountable for the decisions and choices that we make. Um, and I just want to reiterate that it's OK to make a mistake and learn from it. It's not OK to make a mistake and continue making that same mistake over and over and over again. And try to get away with not being held accountable for it, because that's like the definition of insanity. I think a lot of people nowadays are going around saying that the definition of crazy or insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Well, that's pretty crazy. I'm going to have to look that up later to confirm that that's the actual definition. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's really crazy. I think I want to give you one more point, another bonus point, like I did on the last podcast. <laughs> um, you should get some leaders in your life or just people that you look up to. And just have them be the ones that you hold yourself accountable to. You know, um, I'll use, I'm not sure what I can use for an example this time. Let me think about this. Okay. So like I'll use the church thing for an example, since my name is church D. So let's say you're, you know, you go to church and 
you get a chance to be around some ministers or even just some other fellow churchgoers and stuff. Use those people to hold yourself accountable. Like whenever you go out into public, like if you have to go to work, school, whatever the case may be, wherever you're going and you might get into a situation where you have to do something that's out of your character, ask yourself, can I do this in front of my church family? Can I do it in front of these ministers? If the answer is no, don't do it. That's a good way to hold yourself accountable for your actions. You'll never win and you'll never be successful if you can't learn to be held accountable for your actions. Um, I can't win if I'm a leader of a team and every mistake I make, I just ignore it and I blame the team. No, I have to take responsibility for the mistakes that I've made, own up to it and say, okay, this is how we can correct it. Number one, for me as a leader and number two, for us as a team. I know we're living in a time in which uh, the people like to say, oh, who's going to check me, boo or whatever, or I can do whatever I want because I'm grown. You can't tell me nothing. But the fact of the matter is people are still going to tell you something in one way or another. You still have to get up and go to work and get told what to do by a boss unless you become the boss. But even with that, you have to still hold yourself accountable in order to get to that level. So just here's a quick recap of the three points that I was discussing uh, as it pertains to accountability. You must be held accountable with your actions. Um, so whatever you do, if you can't do it in front of somebody that you look up to, don't do it. You must be held accountable uh, with your relationships. So like, let's say we're going into business and you want to spend some money. You need to have some financial advisors to tell you, don't do this. Or if you want to do a business transaction and connect with another business, you need to have somebody to be held accountable to. And finally, your decisions and choices. It kind of ties into your actions, but whatever starts in the mind is going to manifest itself ultimately. So careful how you think and Stop making excuses and playing the blame game. If you make a mistake, own up to it. Learn from it. Don't make that same mistake again. Thank you for all of your time today. Thanks for tuning in to this podcast. I hope it blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. I hope it inspired you. Hey, if you like it, be sure to click the share button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube at Church D. Uh, check out my website. I'll put the link in the description below. And... Until next time, thanks for tuning in, friends.